I am not interested in picking up crumbs of compassion thrown from a table of someone who considers themselves my master. I want the full menu of rights. The struggle for equality is a war that has raged on for years before us and will absolutely continue after us. The fight ranges from political all the way to sexual equality. The beauty of a struggle is the passion that stems from it to see and make a change. Although there is so much wrong with the world, everyone isn't built to help change what we can to make it for better for those to come. We have been blessed with individuals who have made it their personal missions to fight for these equalities. Good evening, I'm Julia Deans, and we have gathered with a common goal in mind, bringing awareness to the battle for equality in South Africa. And today's guest has dedicated most of his life to seeing this through. Born in Clerkstorp in the South African state of Transvaal, Desmond Tutu was the second of three children. His father, a teacher, and his mother, a cook and cleaner at a school for the blind. At the age of 12, his family moved to Johannesburg. With dreams of becoming a physician, he attended Johannesburg Bantu School. Because his parents couldn't afford the proper schooling for Desmond to become a physician, he was trained to become a teacher at Pretoria Bantu Normal School and graduated from the University of South Africa in 1954. During his time teaching, the government instituted the system of apartheid, which meant complete separation of everything. South Africans were legally assigned to an official racial group, restricted to separate areas of living and public facilities. Only white South Africans were allowed to vote in national elections. Eventually, the, the division made its way to South Africa's education system. The government ordained an inferior system of education for black students, and Desmond Tutu refused to cooperate. Although he gave up being a teacher, he was determined to do something even better to make changes to what was happening in his country. Desmond went and received his master's in theology in England and denounced the apartheid system. He demanded equal rights and the repeal of oppressive laws and the end to forced re relocation. He encouraged the nonviolent resistance and was an advocate for an economic boycott of the country. Because of all he was doing to expedite a change, the government revoked his passport to prevent him from traveling and speaking abroad, and his case drew the world's attention. In 1984, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize and elected Archbishop of Cape Town two years later. He was the first black African to serve as Archbishop, which placed him at the head of the Anglican Church in South Africa. Tutu has joined forces with the likes of Mandela, Jimmy Carter, Kofi Annan, and Mary Robinson to form groups whose missions were to promote peace. Tutu made it his mission to counsel forgiveness and cooperation rather than revenge for past injustice. His concern for human dignity, fraternity, and democracy allowed him to maintain the world's admiration. The list of accomplishments seems endless, and I would love to stand here today and remind you all of such. It is an honor, privilege, and a dream to introduce to you Desmond Tutu.